Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and today we're going to be taking a look at the Kadas Edge and the Kadas Captain. So let's get started. Now I'm a huge fan of Kadas product itself. I actually own a Vim 2 and it's still being used to compile kernels that I need. Now, as far as the Kadas company themselves, um, I'm a huge fan of what they do. I like the team. I actually like their forum because the developers are very active on there. Now, as far as the Kadas Edge, again, I was super excited when they announced this because they are actually building this on top of the Rock Chip flagship CPU, the RK3399. Now, what makes this the flagship CPU? It has support for PCIe. Now, this chip itself is not super powerful. It's got a six core, two big, four little, uh, the two big running at 1.8 and the four little running at 1.4. Now on this configuration, it's got four gigs of RAM DDR4 and it actually supports EMMC 16 gigs, 32 and 128 configurations. This is one of the smallest form factor RK3399s that you can find on the market right now. Now it's in a weird form factor where it's got this MXM 3.0, looks more like a RAM slot that you could actually stick to somewhere. Now I'm gonna explain that a little bit more because that's where the captain board comes in. But let's talk about the IOs on this board itself. On the left side, you have the USB 2.0 and then a power slot in the configurations of a USB-C. Then you have HDMI, and then you have another USB-C which supports DisplayPort 1.2, and then you have your USB 3.0. Now, if you flip it over, you have these little two small slots where you actually could expand that and add GPIO or SD card or stuff like that on there. As I was talking about the dim slot that looks like a RAM, this actually slides right into the captain. Now it expands all the functionality on this board. Now taking a look at the captain, on the bottom you have a 3.5 millimeter jack. Then you have two camera ports, display, touchscreen, other display. And then you have these gamepad keys. Uh, up, down, left, right, and then these four other buttons. Then you have the infrared SD card, then a 12 volt barrel connector. Now on the right side, you have the 40 pin GPIO Pi 3 standard, and then a trigger button. Now on the top, which is interesting, you have the gigabit. Here's what's interesting about it. On the left and right shoulders, you actually have buttons. On the other side, you have another button and then two antennas. So once you mount this board onto the captain, you don't have to use these wired connectors. It actually has the antennas built in. Now on the underside, you have a connector for a battery, and then you have the M.2 slot where you could stick in other hardware. Now this board supports two operating systems, the Android Oreo and then Linux distributions. As far as Android goes, I was able to install a game and test how the graphics run and everything and it ran pretty well. As far as the trigger buttons and stuff, it, since this board doesn't have an accelerometer, I wasn't able to control it, but it was enough for a demo. Now on the Linux side, I was able to actually use 4K 60 frames. Now I wasn't able to capture it with my HDMI capture card, but I was able to film a little bit of it. It's very responsive in their Ubuntu environment. And I did run a quick benchmark test comparing to other boards with the same CPU. And it comes out very similar, even though it's on the lower side, but it's still very similar to what they are. As far as heat goes on this guy, the only part that you actually see getting warm is actually the Kadas Edge. The Kadas Captain actually stays relatively cool. They do provide a heat sink on this guy, but I found that not running a heat sink that doesn't have force in force air runs better than putting a heatsink on. So if you're gonna use a heatsink on this guy, make sure you have a fan. Otherwise, I'd rather keep it off. That's just my preference because I've tested other boards and I got better performance without using a heatsink without a fan. This whole guy could also be powered off a battery that they have, which is a 7.4 volt, 2000 milliamp hour battery. I do really like the configuration of this board because I know a lot of stuff is coming out. They have screens that are coming out for this. So I can't wait to get my hands on those to play around with it. Especially you have this gamepad configuration, so you could actually turn this into a really mini gaming thing I mean I wouldn't do competitive gaming with the triggers that they have but still it's an interesting design as well as because it has the expansion port on the bottom for the m.2 you could actually stick in a modem and ultimately turn this into your own cell phone slash tablet so that's an idea that I have in the future that I do really want to try with this board now my only only complaint that I have with this is this button that is smashed between the ethernet chip and the reset button. I had to do some flashing and I couldn't get anything in between there unless I stuck tweezers in there 
and it's kind of hard to flash with that ethernet chip being in the way so just for safety measures i usually just take the board out just to flash it and right, so if you guys enjoyed this video please hit that like button if you guys got any questions about this board hit it up in the comments below everything that i'm talking about this board will have links in the description below now if you guys are new to this channel consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out and as i say in my nerd cave hack till it hurts